good day everyone and uh, thank you so much for attending our webinar this morning my name is murali i'm a full time employee of qos technology with a few years of cyber security experience i'm a certified ethical hacker certified checkpoint security master also one of the core member of purple synapse so purple synapse located in bengaluru which is our world class cyber security research innovation and uh, security simulations lab also provides the red and blue teaming training solutions in order to uh, secure the information uh, systems of our customers so this webinar is happening in association with ktech ktech is cyber security center of uh, excellence a really good initiative from karnataka government to spread cyber security awareness and uh, innovations so as you guys know this webinar is all about providing you basic awareness of uh, malicious hacking using open source tools my goal of this webinar is to provide cyber security awareness by informing you with some of the open source tools major phases in hacking a bit about anonymizers and few countermeasures so please leave your questions in chat box i will discuss on them at the end of this webinar so there are multiple operating system for hacking you can see in the list so throughout this webinar i will be using kali linux okay let's get started hacking operating systems we have seen so by using those operating systems and applications so people will take the access unauthorized unauthorized access to the systems for their intentions so in this webinar we are talking about malicious hacking so hacker is someone who has developed a, a deeper interest in understanding how the computer system or software programs works so that he can take control of the computer by exploiting any of the ex existing weakness in it so every network has some loopholes bugs and misconfigurations which can invite an attacker to play with those vulnerabilities there are mainly five phases let's see the phases of hacking one by one so first phase is reconnaissance when a malicious hacker starts an it security investigation the first phase is the data reconnaissance that is gathering the information as much as possible about the his target so gathering information can be ip addresses port numbers and different services domain details mail servers network topology or anything it would be so an expert hacker will spend most of the time in reconnaissance phase so that he will help with further phases of the attacks the information about target can be collected using three main methods one is passive second semi passive and active so that is sending no packets limited packets or more packet that means more traffic to the target ip address to get a response back from that so how it happens so multiple tools out there uh, on the internet some are commercial and uh, most of them are available as open source so of course uh, tools will do rest of the hard work for security professionals and also for malicious hackers let's see some of the examples here for the reconnaissance phase so so there are some websites something called uh, who is hosting my who is hosting this and the uh, census census.io shodan.io and uh, wayback machine that is archives.org the ping.eu So if you can see this who is hosting website okay so 
So for example, if you type any domain name and search in this, so they will be able to see some information like IP addresses of that server, which is hosting this web server and uh, who is the hosting provider. And if you can see uh, who is registered for this domain, definitely Acker uh, can see uh, some information who has registered and all like, like this. So address and um, and the phone number, the person name, and most of the things. So from this, at this stage, okay, at this stage, hacker got some of the IP address of that. You know, if the if the malicious hacker is trying to access some website, so. First thing is he will get the IP address of the server and it could be through any any means through the NS lookup or trace route or anything. So next step is hacker will try to enumerate the information. So like this and you know if, if he puts inside this census or shodan, he'll be able to get information like this. So what are these open uh, ports and services and their versions and some information about the operating systems. So if we, if we paste the same IP address in student.io, gets more information like what is the location and uh, many more things like services, open ports, and other devices which are connected with with this hacker can really enumerate the information which is available publicly and decide for the next attacks so if suppose for example 21 is open and 22 port number is opened so hacker will try to decide what kind of uh, attacks will be applied to this for example ssh is open brute force attack can be possible. So Shodan and Census are very great, you know, very good tools for uh, internet searching, like for the IOTs, like any internet of things can be scanned and, you know, uh, result will be shown to you like webcams, which is available publicly uh, and uh, <clears throat> any, Web, you know, web server or uh, any FTP servers, for example. Okay, if somebody hosted F FTP server uh, newly, so if if they can cap packet capture on that using Wireshark or TCP dump, you know, suddenly they will be able to see some of the scanning, uh, you know, traffic from different countries. So no need to panic about that. But because of this, you know, this kind of search engines can really scan the entire network and gives the information about the specific ports like you know, if i if if i'm able to search for the port number 21 so it it searches the entire internet and gives you all the service you know servers information which is hosting port number 21 and <clears throat> like this and you know hackers can specifically go into the location and search for example in in the bangalore so whoever is hosting ftp servers they can be visible here so if it is public facing so next is uh, wayback machine so it it gives us the history of the website okay for example today's website is different and and one uh, four two to three years back our website was different so it actually contains the archives of the website information and gives us uh, the history of the information like we can actually distinguish how was the website so after getting those information like IP address and services for example we found some 21 22 ports by using Shodan and IO 
uh, Shodan and Census. So Acker will try to make use of this open source, which is freely available most of the time, and check for the specific ports, just to confirm, because that is the OSINT, I mean, open source uh, tools like uh, census and shodan.io those contains the most of the time those contains uh, wrong information so in order to confirm that just enter a domain name and uh, or, or the IP address check for those port numbers if it is really open or not so it, it just gives you it because it sends few of the packets to the target and gets the response back so that it can decide some port is opened or closed. Like if you can search for this, it shows you some ports are closed. Specifically, Akas will try to poke around these things. So next thing is So basically in traditional way what happens people make use of Google hacking like like if you want to search me and uh, search any people like me like uh, I type Middle M and LinkedIn and QS technology so these are the keywords specifically used to input the Google so that it can reduce the focus area and gives the result at the top so here is my profile And uh, if, if for, uh, for example, for file type, if I want to specifically find out the specific file type from a specific website, I just type site checkpoint.com and uh, file type is PDF checkpoint.com it is so this list outs all the PDF files in the Google results so this is a kind of you know traditional way of hacking Google using the Google okay. one more thing there is something called open source intelligence framework OSINT framework basically we call it as And uh, everything is available here at one place. So for this, anything over the internet will become the resource. So definitely people can make use of it to specifically uh, search what they want. For example, so I want email addresses from the specific company like uh, Wipro.com So it will just search us over the internet and gives us the result So by using this email addresses, okay So hacker can do phishing attacks spamming attacks and many more so Anything available over the internet those email IDs will be uh, you know, fetched here by using this tool. That is skyman.com. So many are there likewise. So definitely, you know, hackers will make use of it. So So not just those tools, many tools are available over the internet for data gathering. For example, this one. So top 20 data reconnaissance and intel gathering tools. So almost all are open source and people can make use of it.
many good tools are there like Maltigo, ReconNG, the Harvester, Shodan. And also, there are inbuilt tools in Kali Linux like this for information gathering. People can either use this inbuilt tools or download it from the internet and you know, try to gather information much as possible. Okay. Next step is scanning. That's the next phase of the hack, uh, hacking. Scanning is the second step in the intelligence gathering process in, mal in a malicious hacking where information about a specific address, you know, IP address, operating systems, and their architecture services running on the victim can be obtained. Okay. So there are three types of scanning the port scanning, network scanning, and uh, vulnerability scanning. Vulnerability scanning involves the use of automated tools to proactively identify security vulnerabilities. Uh, some of the popular tools for scanning are Nmap, uh, Nessus, NetScan Tool Pro, Urbscan, Angry IP Scanner, uh, OpenVAS, Retina Network Security Scanner, Qualys Free Scan, Net2, uh, and many more are there. So only thing, uh, it, it takes time to understand its future features and uh, operations. So some of the uh, list of web scanning tools are there. So I can show you here, uh, Google. And just close this. That is from OWASP, I think. Sorry. So here it is. So that's another way of uh, checking, uh, checking for the information by giving the specific keywords. So I was searching for this vulnerability scanning tools for the application hackers. There are a list of application hacking, you know, scanning tools are there. So people will uh, definitely make use of it since it is available for everyone. And uh, for a practical example, okay. For a practical example, I take Nmap and uh, Nessus vulnerability scanner. Uh, uh, I know since they are quite popular tools. So Nmap. I'm hearing some echo. Listen. Uh, Okay, so NMAP, it, it, it stands for Network Mapper. Can be used for many purposes, like uh, to check whether a specific port is opened or not by uh, using different scanning types. So check, to check information about OES and its version, and also uh, for scanning uh, known vulnerabilities using the scripts. Those, there are some inbuilt scripts that it can make use of it. So let me show that. Sorry. Okay. Okay. 
sorry uh, i just need to turn on this again Hello, hello. Uh, just a minute, it's turning on. Um, hello yeah hello okay so uh i was talking about nessus so if you can see so there are there are multiple ways that we can make use of nmap so here are some tools like nmap which can scan the you know if 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 using nmap we can scan some target ip address for its service version the output would be like this so it shows you what are the open ports and service and its versions running accordingly so for example vsftpd uh, 2.3.4 is running for ftp service and uh, ASC bind 294 for domain and HTTP Apache 2.228 it's running so if if, if uh, attacker you know, goes back and uh, search more about this version of this FTP service so he will find out some backdoor vulnerability so that is here nmap and the uh, script is there to exploit the non vulnerable that is FTP VSFTP D backdoor on the port number one and just he needs to specify the target IP address like this by entering the command and it gives the output whether that is vulnerable or not so it's vulnerable the target IP addresses so by using this information Attacker can make use of exploits, which is available in the Metasploit and uh, exploit it. So that I'll explain you in the next slide. So nmap, any script, okay, which which will be used from the background, like uh, from here. There's a file structure. User uh, share and uh, and map. Scripts will be run from this location. Then map user and uh, user and map scripts. You can find what we are searching is FTP vs FTPD script. Okay, this was taken by that command and it will be run. So like this. It comes confirms just scans and it confirms that is vulnerable to this uh, weakness sorry so this is one of the web server metasploitable tool I'm using and this server is hosted in, by FTP server and server is vulnerable to VSFTPD backdoor
So next is uh, vulnerability scanning tools. So here I'm using uh, Nessus. So Nessus provides uh, information about security vulnerabilities and uh, helps in penetration testing and idea signature development. So it checks for uh, latest software patches, tries with the default passwords, common passwords on the system accounts. And if it exists and gives us the result that it has uh, default passwords. Uh, and the configuration audit it does in vulnerability analysis. It also does mobile device uh, audits and uh, provides customized report options like uh, in a CSV format, HTML, XML, PDF, and uh, Nessus database. So this Nessus database can be later uh, imported into Metasploitable or any other exploitable uh, tools framework. And uh, this vulnerability information can be you know, exploited. So next is Metasploit framework that I was talking about. So let's see how it works. So Metasploit framework is, is a very powerful tool commonly used, provides the uh, exploits of known security vulnerabilities, helps in penetration testing and uh, IDS signature development. It's, it's a total framework for developing and uh, executing exploit code against the uh, remote target machine. So exploiting a system oh, well, includes choosing and configuring the exploit. Exploit is nothing but the code enters, uh, enters a target system by taking advantage of one of its bugs and choosing and configuring the payload is next step is the payload is nothing but the code that will be executed on the target system upon a successful entry and choosing and uh, you know, there are multiple functionalities available operations choosing the encoding techniques so that IPS and antivirus ignores the encoded payload so finally, uh, run the exploit or, or just type exploit or run so that it does its work. So let me show something, uh, you know, uh, just to understand it's uh, how it works. So previously we have scanned for using I'm getting echo. Uh, please mute your audio. Okay. There's a sample report of uh, Nessus scanning. Ran on that web server. So malicious attackers also make use of this such tools. So that Nessus will provide us the report based on the scoring system. So it could be in critical, high, or medium, low, and informal. So that all depends on how fast an attacker can you know, that vulnerability can be exploitable. Exploited. Uh, few minutes it depends on that so because no, there are some critical vulnerabilities found here i just copy this as an attacker i just unmute somebody are talking so, okay so stop Okay, so just copy this. Uh, even I don't know as an attacker what is this, and all. I, I, I no need to know about this in advance. So let me dig out this. What is this? So there is something called MSF console. That is Metasploit framework. Either you can click from here or just type MSF console in the terminal of the Kali. So use. I just uh, I just search that 
vulnerability name okay search so it definitely gives some known exploit available for this vulnerability so that's uh, actually the back door so let me check what is this so I'm just use the keyword and paste this exploit and started using this and if you want to know information about this so I can get information like this this module exploits malicious backdoor that was added to the unreal IRCD so internet relay chat daemon uh, was a package previously during uh, 2019 sorry, 2009 so that was added to the software so I installed that so those uh, those softwares were uh, containing this backdoor. So this is a known vulnerability and I'm just going to exploit this. So before exploiting, just need to give the, you know, just need to fill out this variables here. No, anything. Set our host is, our host is nothing but the remote host of the target. So here's the remote host is this 168 20.138 uh, 20 okay so again check show options just to confirm whether that is placed so basically this is the code program that exploit is so if you can type edit you can see how the program was developed for this exploit so this, this is the one so inside that so we can actually customize it so as per our intention let's just exploit it so it is executing and uh, and and use the shell of that server over the port number this since that contains the backdoor so if i type who am i so it, it's the root of that server because that backdoor door uh, that vulnerability gives us the the root access so now we can run many commands as, as much as possible like ls so it lists out all the uh the files which, which is there in that specific uh, directory and the uh, pwg so it's basically need to know the linux commands how to make use of them where, where ww So this is how it works actually. Um, so attacker can literally take the access to that that command line of the uh, web server and does many things. As as you know, since he's a root user now. So next is just to give you some idea how a scanning can be done and how if any you know vulnerability is critic in critical can be exploited using metasploit framework so next is uh, being anonymizer that is uh, I'll, I'll explain it in a later part so come back to the other phases so first we have understood what is reconnaissance or footprinting and scanning the next other three steps are gaining the access, maintaining the access, and uh, clearing the tracks. So let's see what is gaining the access. So this is the phase where the real hacking takes place, as you have seen in the uh, Metasploit exploit, you know, during that lab so previously. So vulnerabilities uh, discovered during the reconnaissance and scanning phase are now exploited to gain access. So so here attackers gets access to the target machine and does privilege escalation or full control. For example, uh, say hacker chooses phishing attack. Uh, 
it's a safe and uh, simple delivery method to gain access so for, uh, another example in case of application hacking is something uh, cross-site scripting cross-site uh, request forgery xml external entity attacks and uh, exploiting uh, you know insecure file and file upload and downloads inside the websites so any bugs inside the website can be exploitable so that is uh, more done by the bug bunties by using that scanning tools which i shown you in the os website so next is maintaining the access so hackers may want to keep that access persistence for future exploitation and attacks also as base to launch additional attacks they can perform any post exploitation activities such as uh, creating a new administrator account dumps the user user passwords and pass the hash and pivot attacks in order to maintain access to other machines in the same network and uh, stealing the browser history data from victim pc can be used by you know some some tools like beef so can be used for that so you may you know uh, overall game is played letting the victim think that nothing was disturbed so, and the final step is clearing the tracks so no no thief wants to get caught and experienced uh, hacker clears all the evidence so that in the later point of time no one will find any traces finding back to him so this this involves modifying corrupting and deleting the valued uh, you know valuable uh, log files so also modifying the registry values uh, uninstalling all the applications he has uh, yes uh, uh, used earlier and deleting all the folders he has created so so basically to delete all the log files which should not lead to him so next step is so being anonymizer so well experienced uh, malicious hackers never ever ever hack without being an anonymizer so if you want to browse through unindexed internet like indexed internet what what we use through search engines like any any website is indexed by using spiders or crawlers so we just gets the information from the google or any search engines so unindexed in the, you know internet that is the dark web you will have to use something called tor otherwise uh, you won't be able to access the darknet inside the defect tor stands for uh, the, the onion router so it will also protect hackers anonymity by passing the computers through several uh, relays that say uh, proxy chains okay like this in the i know you can see in the slide so anonymity would be uh, you know more stronger using tor within a weak network as allows peer to peer network that is p2p uh, p2p network for example tools are anonymizer tail os announcer nipe hide your ip and many more are there definitely you can dig out and check about them how it works so please mute your audio i'm getting a okay. kick So there is a demonstration I can show you. Okay. Let's uh, let's understand or, or see in a video that I have documented a scenario of a reverse shell attack to gain the access and uh, privilege escalation for maintaining the access using persistence and clearing the locks, uh, any security events on the Windows. So password reset from the malicious hacker. So let's see those things. So something I have. It. <clears throat> okay.
So here I'm using MSF console, that is Metasploit framework. So Metasploit framework is, is a framework on a, for exploitation framework that, that contains a lot of modules like uh, exploit auxiliaries, post uh, and uh, payloads, encoders and knobs. These are the modules actually. Basically, uh, this contains the several scripts inside that that does some exploitation operations. Everything is scripts and programming language, mostly in PHP. So I'm using exploit uh, called HVA server. So misc HVA server I'm using. So and filling the variables there. If you can see what is that HVA server, that's a HTML application. I'm going to create the payload. So this, this module has, this module hosts an uh, no, HTML application that will that when open run a payload via powershell actually so svc host is nothing but the server is, which is hosted. So that ip address i just need to copy in. that is the attacker's ip address let's say one six setting the payload for a reverse tcp connection so that the victim the moment clicks on that payload initiate the connection back to attacker's machine in order to take the control back so here in the reverse TCP, to mention the local host that attacker's mission. And just run exploit. So it will create a link it, it just creates a link so that I can use this link and send it to the victim through email by doing the phishing attacks so that you know email or oh, you know that attack you know victim side people can download it and the moment he enters this website Victim will be down, you know, that browser will download the payload. So that I'll show you in the demonstration that. Okay. So at this moment, how the delivery method will be. Okay. So this delivery method would be in this fashion. So through a phishing mail, okay, people will try to uh, play around the uh, messages like this. So here is my, yeah, here is my uh, URL. So I used bit dot URL, something like this, bit dot ly, bitly, okay. So just type that URL HTTP colon 183.168.30.90. Okay. So this was suppose this was the URL was got generated from that HVA exploit. 
and I just shorten this URL and I get this. I copy this and paste it here in the mail. Where you know, uh, I'm getting, getting a lot of mail. Is okay, so in order to make it real, you know, attackers will send the phishing mails like this. You know, instead of IP address, I just shorten the URL so that IP address will be hidden behind this. So let's come back to that video. Okay, so here I'm using that as a web server. I just send the URL to the victim through the phishing mail. And he's trying to enter that URL and uh, that payload will be downloaded to this machine. So like this, download.hta. This is HTML application, so not .exe file. If it is, a, if there is a .exe file, that could be detected by antivirus. <clears throat> and even Chrome will will bypass this since it's a HTML application. So while delivering, you know, attacker will monitor the delivery stage here, delivering payload. The moment that was clicked and executed, and and at the victim side. So attacker gets the shell of the victim through some port which was mentioned here. She so got the shell. So let me see what is there uh, uh, in that payload. I'll show you here. So this was in downloads. If you can see what is there inside this payload, the payload was created by using VB script that calls the PowerShell to execute that uh, in order to give the reverse shell back to the attacker. You can definitely dig out this script what the, it does. So everything is automated. So now what? So it's literally got the command, I mean terminal of the victim that is Windows 7. And the metaprinter is the one that is nothing but the shell of the victim. So here we have a lot of options, I mean number of commands which can perform some functionalities for <clears throat> for example networking commands core commands file system commands many other the post exploitation activities what are all the things that malicious hacker can do? <clears throat> Get the information about the system and uh, get the information about the information about the interface IP addresses and the routing information. And you go to the shell, the command. Line. And see what are the files just you know attacker tries to traverse through the all the file systems in the computer and whichever seems to be interesting you can download it so like this the screenshot which was collected I'm not, yeah? I'm not. 
नितिन वे नितिन वे that was a screenshot <clears throat> and uh, so currently we don't have the <clears throat> full control over the mission so use this get system get system will be your privilege is Okay. Uh, please mute. Uh, I'm not able to speak properly uh, because of the disturbance. <clears throat> so there is some uh, some other exploit which is used for privilege escalation. That is, so. bypass us or windows system that is user account controls so the moment we use that and exploit so it gets the privilege escalation on the windows that is root access administrator access so so that so we need to specify the local host So now it gets the full access. So one more session was opened for privilege escalation. On the session number two. So this was this session uh, is used over the session one. Session one was not in the admin privilege. So session two is in admin privilege by taking the you know by exploiting. uh that vulnerability so now if you use get system so it got the system access for full access <laughs> okay Shall it's it's full access. So now uh, there are many post post exploitation activities that one of one of them is uh, key keystroke scanning, like uh, key log using the key logger. So anything which victim types inside the browser or inside any file, those keywords will be dumped into the attacker's machine so that he can see you now in case if it is a passwords and usernames that can be easily visible to the attackers <clears throat> so key scan start this the command to start the key logger and here you can see whichever key keywords are used like in the the keyboard that is reflected here i can i can even see what are the processes running by using just the ps command so that i can try to as a malicious hacker i can try to migrate my malicious process into the legitimate process like notepad So two one zero eight is the one that PID, and if I use this, <clears throat> many are there. Hmm. so migrate 
this is this one more uh, exploit post exploitation exploit command so manage migrate okay so that actually migrates my malicious process into the legitimate process like notepad so let me forward quickly so how we just need to see in the background how that victim was created a tcp connection back to the attacker's machine like that is 163 177 112 128 is attacker's machine on some port so that we will come to know by using netstat hyphen x so that was connection is established You know, uh, malicious hackers can literally uh, download and upload the files, whatever he requires. You know, if, if he wants to install the malicious uh, files, like uh, any rootkits, you can use make use of upload download commands which are available in the Metapreter shell. And the <clears throat> there is something called you know for maintaining the access there is something called persistence command so we just need to run that so that it creates a temporary file in the whenever victim reboot so it you know the connection remains to the victim to the attacker mission if you want me to explain this command run persistence minus u is for automatically start the agent uh, when the user logs on agent is nothing but that payload which we have delivered to the victim and i is the interval every five minutes five seconds it has to create the reverse shell the reverse tcp connection back or the port number four to the attacker's ip address so after running the persistence we'll get one more session that is persistence connection session even after a victim reboots, that connection, uh, that victim PC creates the reverse state. connection back to the attacker. So for clearing the okay. For clearing the locks, we have used something called clear EB. Okay, so this clears all the locks in the win windows that events, security events, application locks, or system locks. And on the Linux machine, it is in the var log messages. So if you go to Windows, you can see in the event viewer, so all logs are cleared. Application logs, security logs, and system logs. Just, just to wipe out all the logs, we just run that command. You know, attackers. And the uh, attacker can you know, uh, literally change the password without knowing the existing password by using some commands. So just net user command like that.
So it's the, the command is net user, and uh, we need to copy that user for which user attacker is going to change the passwords according to his password right? without knowing the current password. So it's got successfully changed, but victim will not be able to log in since if he forgot that. Uh, I mean, he will be not be able to guess that password what attacker set. <clears throat> not possible. So literally, uh, attacker can do anything on the victim machine. So if he gets the full control over it, for example, turning off the firewalls, turning off the antivirus, and uh, taking the remote access remote desktop using our desktop many more and literally harden that uh, victim machine so that he will be used used for uh, future purpose if anything so that's all a small demonstration <clears throat> that you can uh, you know try in the in the labs this was my topology so where attacker was sitting on the internet and in between firewall is there and uh, the router or switches and going to the admin mission admin mission and uh, admin pc that is running windows and there is some server which is internet facing so those two are statically napped so that it it will be accessed by the outside users and uh, that's how that demonstration was shown. So <clears throat> let's talk about the prevention measures. So here. So I'm a checkpoint engineer. I give, I know some of the countermeasures using the checkpoint security solutions like anti-bot. So only thing you need to aware how it works. So anti anti bot works based on the bad reputation of IP addresses and the do, bad domain names prevents the bot communication by identifying bot damage. Uh, IPS works on signature based engine. Antivirus prevents uh, malware based on the hash values with the uh, help of malware feeds and blocks access to malware sites. So basically, every uh, malicious files has, to, has some checks, checksum that is hash values. Okay, so in order to differentiate between those malicious scripts, the checksum is required. So those database will be used inside the uh, any solutions like you know like antivirus and IPS. So that just compares against the database and uh, does the prevention actions. So T and the TX, that is threat emulation and threat extraction is for preventing the zero day attacks. So basically it does emulation and uh, extraction for preventing the zero day attacks. So majorly people has to use the endpoint security solutions like sandblasting agent for uh, in order to uh, prevent the zero day ransomware attacks and to get the uh, reports of forensic about the malicious entry malicious file entry and exist point so between that what happens clearly you'll get a lot of uh, information that 